Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today, we are covering Hell House LLC, a found footage movie. I think it's, it feels like it's been a while since we've done one of those. A little bit. Mm -hmm. But before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So today, for a multitude of reasons, I am drinking a more relaxing tea, and I am drinking the Rishi Lavender Mint Tea tea is probably Ooh. gonna be yeah i saw that this that sounds nice <laughs> i was like i gotta try this and rishi is a great brand they're the kind that has like the like the real leaves in the bag so it's like loose yeah. leaf tea but it has peppermint sage licorice root lavender and lavender extract whatever that is it's lavender <laughs> yeah all, all the, the lavender, lavender. <laughs> yeah. and I am using our merch cub, cub, cup. Yay! The I'm going to kill you at some point mug. I did not. I and I have even. not had my allotted caffeine today. So I grabbed Mystic Dragon Green Tea. Ooh! It is by the Spice and Tea Exchange in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It was a gift. Fancy. One of our tea sippers sent it to me after they had a a vacation. So. Oh, very nice. Thanks, Mom. And <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. And for the ingredients, it has sencha and dragonwell green tea, cornflower petal, strawberry, and rhubarb flavor. Very nice. Yes. But for our tea sippers out there, Brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So for Hell House LLC's summary, thank you to IMDb. <laughs> I meant to reword it, but I, I like It's fine. Five years after an unexplained malfunction causes the death of 15 tour goers and staff on the opening night of a Halloween haunted house tour. And uh, it's about a documentary crew that travels back to the scene of this tragedy to try and figure out what really happened. So for entertainment, this movie, like found footage movies are really hit or miss, especially nowadays. Oh yeah. Yeah, thanks to Paranormal Activity. Yes. But this is like one of those gems that you don't really hear a lot of people talk about, but it's a lot better than you would anticipate it to be. Yes. So, so I had found this completely by random, <laughs> random crazy happenstance, and on a whim decided to watch it. I actually watched the second one first because <laughs> that's what I stumbled across. And it made me want to watch the first one. And I hawked it on Alyssa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you, you must see this. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I would, like, this isn't like I absolutely have to watch this movie all the time, but it's definitely, like, a consistent go-to for me. Definitely. So I would rate this a 7.5. The, the strongest points of the movie is I feel like they do a great job with setting up the movie and characters. Like, I feel like there's so many, I mean, horror movies in general, but also just found footage movies where, like, they just kind of throw these characters at you and they don't really do a whole good job of fleshing them out. They more, like, put them in situations and, I don't know, it's just kind of, like, hard to kind of get follow along yeah or or to like enjoy the characters mm -hmm. but it's like that they, they do a really good job like setting up oh this is what's going to happen to them 
you know, and then you watch it actually like how it unfolds. It's like, you know, something happens, but you don't know exactly how or what happens. And so it's really cool to like, anyways. And then they do, (laughs) they do. We're tired, guys. (laughs) Yeah. They do a really good job on like the subtle scares, like a real, like, they do chill down your spine type of like real good scares. For sure. This is one of the few that don't rely on jump scares for every single scare of the effing movie. (laughs) Yes. And I do really enjoy, this is another reason why, it's like, it's not just a good uh, found footage movie, but like a good like movie in general, like even if it wasn't found footage, where like they slowly reveal the history about the hotel as the movie goes on, because it kind of flips back and forth between um, you watching in the past what's happening to these characters and the present day, then like uh, interviewing people. And then they do jump scares really well. It is so refreshing to have a movie that is like, oh, we need to have loud music to let you know that there's a jump scare. Like, they do that, I think, like once or twice. But they do some other jump scares where it's like he just turns the camera and, like, clown right there. Mm -hmm. And so it just jump scares you without it feeling forced or cheesy like it it feels natural yes and they're warranted Mm -hmm. the jump scares are actually warranted it serves a purpose and it relieves a little bit of the tension but they also build up to it it's not just completely bam here's a jump scare with a loud noise Mm -hmm. yeah and then i also love how they as the documentary crew is interviewing people (laughs) they kind of like slowly reveal what happens to each of the characters that you're watching and so it's it's literally you just you're sitting back for the ride like not only having the mystery slowly unraveled for you but you're also watching yourself like unravel the it's kind of like two pieces where the documented crew is unraveling one part of the mystery while you are watching the footage and like understanding like other parts of the the mystery so that way you collectively you have a better understanding of what happened but as far as like the the less strong points for the movie is i don't know what it is specifically About found footage movies. I guess like other horror movies too. But it's like they always make men such assholes. (laughs) So (laughs) I don't understand. It's like, you know. And and by that she means like horn dog. Yes. Like just constantly thinking of women as like. Like there should have been a lawsuit (laughs) for sexual harassment type. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, men have a more dynamic. They do actually to them than just think of other things. Yeah, like if you want to have one guy like that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's... they mostly did just have the one guy like that, but he was so in your face about it for most of the movie that yeah. it's just we get it you're a pig move on like honestly it distracts from the enjoyment of the movie like i don't understand why they they did it like i don't understand why movies keep doing it like that yes is it it's It's sweeter than i expected sweeter yes and it's like a really really soft it's good green tea it's not that bitter kind of Low quality green tea. This is the good green tea. Like this would be good cold too, like iced. Hmm. It'd be really good iced. It almost I, tastes like a dessert tea. Since we're trying our teas, I went ahead and tried the lavender, and it's interesting because like whenever you smell it, you smell more peppermint with like a teeny tiny bit of lavender. But then whenever you drink it, it's like lavender hits you first and then the peppermint kind of like stays on your tongue. And so now mm-hmm. like right now it feels like I had a mint. Like it is strong. Love that. Oh, when the peppermint just cools after. Yes. Oh, so lovely. That's great. I love but it. But this is really good. Ooh. 
Ooh. It is really good. I'm going to have to bring it over next time. Yes, I want to try now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that's a really frustrating part of this movie and a lot of other of these types of movies in general. And then my other thing is this I'm kind of conflicted on because I really wish they had given, and this is the movie standing alone, not the sequels or anything like that. I really wish they had revealed a little bit more of an explanation on why there were like demons, like why there was possession, why there were like all of these, uh, I guess you'd call them sigils or symbols. Like all you really hear about is that people kept disappearing from the hotel and that the hotel owner hung himself because his business was declining. And I guess we probably should have said a disclaimer that the movie, you do see a, a picture of the the owner after he passed. You also see a little bit of basically suicide. A guy cuts his throat. And uh, another guy does get hung as well. You do see him getting hung in the attic. His friend tries to save him. This is toward the end. But then there are robed people that stop them. <laughs> so yeah, it just turns into a cluster. Yeah. But it's like, on the one hand, I wish I had been given more information about that because it would... It's kind of confusing because I'm like, well, like, what, like, how does that fit into the story? But then on the other hand, with it being found footage, you know, it, it makes sense that not all of these answers would be revealed to us because they might not necessarily know. Same with the documentary crew. Like, if the documentary mm -hmm. crew had known that all that stuff was going on, I don't think they probably would have entered the building. But so, and the documentary itself was also unfinished. Yeah, so it's like I I a bit like conflicted with that because it's like on the one hand I wanted to know, but on the other hand it does make sense storyline wise to not have all of those answers revealed. But now that you mentioned that the documentary was never finished, that makes me wonder. Well, then who who uploaded the documentary? Like, how did this not, happen? So not all of them went into the hotel. They left one of their members behind, the one that was reviewing the videotapes that Sarah had given them. That's true. So now how he ended up getting the footage from when they broke into the hotel is a different question in and of itself. Hmm. But yeah. the other footage he could have easily gotten before they left for the hotel. So, Yeah, so, I mean, that stuff is diving a little bit more into the realism, yeah. so I'll expand on that a little bit more, but that that's what I got for entertainment. Yeah, so I give it a 7. I am still a little bit partial to the second one, and we'll do that one at a later time, I'm sure, but because it is a great series. But it's it's one of the better found footage films, for sure. They're great with subtle scares. There are things that you could miss that they don't necessarily react to either. So unless you're paying attention, you might miss a couple of things. They build up to the jump scares. So when they do have a jump scare, they make sense. And they're okay. You're not mad at it. <laughs> like we usually are. Because it's not a scare. It's a startle. And they're different. <laughs> but this movie doesn't rely on that. And even with some of their jump scares, they don't have the loud noise, like Alyssa was saying. So it's a lot more enjoyable. And it actually makes it a lot scarier <laughs> when it does happen. <laughs> And it makes you freak out a little more. And you're just sitting here like, oh, God, what's going to come next <laughs> with this? You get genuinely anxious for the the characters and hope that they get out of the situation and do the smart thing and leave. <laughs> of course, they don't. This movie's got a movie. And they tell you in the beginning that they obviously didn't. <laughs> but you still kind of hope that they do <laughs> anyway. Because... The one character, Paul, I believe, is such a pig. You don't feel bad when he gets attacked. 
but the way that he gets attacked is absolutely terrifying and it's great it's awful and we hate it but it's great <laughs> scare wise they did a good job with it and then he's like gone for a couple of days and they can't find him and when they do find him they think that all the other stuff that they had randomly experienced around the house was him so they they make you kind of wonder okay was it him and something happened he got in on a prank or something or or is it really they need to get out of here mm -hmm. and that's kind of cool that they they lead it in that direction a little there's some things that aren't very realistic we'll get to that obviously in the realism scale but it's mostly it sucks you in it doesn't take you out of the movie there are very very few things in there that you're like hold on <laughs> I do wish that they had expanded more in this movie of exactly why they couldn't leave. Like, I believe it was Tony, I'm pretty sure, that at some point was like, F this, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. We just experienced this. None of you are smart enough to realize that this isn't normal. Yeah. I'm gone. And then Andrew takes him aside and tells him something that makes him change his mind and says, I can't leave. I have to stay. We have to put on the, the show of the haunted house and we have to we have to stick it out. And it sucks. So I know that they go into it more in the later movies. I wish that they give you a bit more context in this one. Because it's such a 180 when he was so adamant about I don't care anymore about what you guys want to do. I don't care that you don't believe me. I am gone. I'm doing the smart thing. I'm leaving. And then next scene, he's like, he's right. I can't leave. Why not? <laughs> so that part was frustrating. But everything else made mostly enough sense that you're invested pretty much right off the bat. I also love in the very beginning... I watch plenty of crime shows. So when they're doing like the, the news footage and everything and slicing everything together and having the interviews and all, it feels like an episode of Dateline or Snapped or 48 Hours. Yeah. And I love it. it <laughs> I know it's in. not. It does. I know it's not everybody's thing. And it jumps around a little bit with that kind of feel. But personally, I thought it was a bit more engaging that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to that layout with the crime shows that I watch. So I enjoyed the hell out of it. <laughs> but that's mostly what I had for entertainment. <laughs> I wish more had build up and subtle scares like this one did. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it really is one of those movies where it just gives you chills. Yes. Like watch it in a pitch black room. Yes. Dude, I watched this first one the first time on my own in the dark. And I was freaking out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take many movies it really to do doesn't. that to us. It just like It's rare yeah. lately. We've seen so many that lately it it takes a lot <laughs> for us to get to that point. So for this one to have us both like, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, please don't. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah. But for realism, it's like there's a few questionable things about it, but overall it's not too bad. So I would personally give this a three. The first thing that kind of immediately comes to mind where I'm like, well, that doesn't really make sense if this was like actually a, a film or whatever, or this happened in real life is when like after the jump scare with the clown the first time and them asking him as he's showing them the footage, oh, like was you or someone messing with the mannequin? 
But that was a little bit dumb of a question because instead of like asking, they could have, they had cameras all over the house. They could have just looked at that footage, not just the handheld uh, camcorder footage and shown, oh, like how did it move? Like it just, the fact that they just immediately, I don't know, like I feel like they could have cut out that bit. And made it feel more realistic rather than like, because as soon as I started asking that, it just throws it into question on like, oh, is this really a, a real, a real incident that happened and stuff like that. I think it kind of for that one depends on the angles that they had because they didn't have too many cameras set up at that point in the movie yet. They were still working on setting some of them up. Yeah, but so I it wish it depends a little bit, but they did jump to, oh, that's a nice prank pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, like even if they had made the comment, oh, we can't check the camera footage because that camera's not up yet or not functioning yeah. yet. It's like even if they just said that, that would just seal off that plot hole. But anyways. Yeah. Um <laughs> But as far as realism, I thought it was really good the way that they did the actual incident where you are following the per a person that's going through the haunted house and you see people like running out and stuff. It's like I feel like they did that situation so well because you can see the confusion during the haunted house because people don't know what was staged and what was mm -hmm. actually an emergency. And honestly, that's kind of, that's a scary thought where it's like, well, what if something happened to you and you're in a haunted house and people just thought it was staged? It's like the, the urban legends. I don't know if these are actually true or not, but like the urban legends of like, oh, someone, you know, hung themselves from their tree in the front yard and it was Halloween. And so trick or treaters passed it all night thinking that, it was oh, a, that's a cool prop decoration. And <laughs> yeah. then they're like, oh, no, that was actually a real body. It's just like stuff like that is like really yeah. creepy because it's like, you know, whenever you're in that situation, you're like, oh, everything's fine. But then you come out of it and you realize what you actually experienced. And you're just like, holy shit. Like, that's and they <laughs> they have used that idea in a few other movies concerning haunted houses. Mm hmm like the staged kind of haunted houses in movies. But I feel like this displays it a lot better than yeah. a lot of the others yeah. and a lot more realistically. Yeah. Like when the mm -hmm. clown runs by in the hallway trying to leave and you're like, was that supposed to happen? Or <laughs> it's just very unsettling and confusing. And you start to wonder if that was supposed to, to occur or if he was just, yeeting <laughs> yeah and then kind of like the last thing and the biggest part that takes away from the realism for me and this is a sin for many found footage movies is some of the camera shots and the way that they did the camera work didn't really make a lot of sense like the speculation on like oh well how did the documentary crew, how they got like attacked with the demon, how did that footage make its way out for us to be able to see? Or like, uh, I think his name was Tim or Paul, the, the perverted guy, the guy that hid under the covers. That was Paul. Oh, Paul. Okay. Thank you. Paul uh, the pig. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> The fact that he wakes up twice. I mean, they had some legitimately good scares, to be fair. But the fact that he wakes up and immediately turns on the camera to talk into it. That, do that doesn't make any sense at all. Like, yeah, you would turn on a light so you can see. But why would you be turning on the camera to start talking to it? Just I can kind of see that with certain personality types I know a couple people in particular that like live on social media <laughs> and thrive on it. So being able to record yourself most of the time, I can, I can see people like that being but into it. They weren't even recording it for social media though. I know, but he was told by, I believe Alex 
to record everything setup wise. And he just kept taking it a step further because remember he was like recording the the new hires and zooming in on the girls and all. So that wasn't quite as much of a stretch for me. See, I just that just it doesn't make any sense, but like if you hear something, why would you wake up and immediately turn on the camera? I don't know. Like, especially whenever he's filming for a haunted house. Now, it'd be different if they were, like, paranormal investigators and he was woken up. Then, yeah, I could totally see someone, like, turning on the camera to be like, what was that? But, I mean, maybe it could, I guess an alternative explanation is since they did hear that stuff had happened in the house and he heard something happening, then maybe he instinctually turned on the camera because he's like oh maybe it was something paranormal i don't know that's the only way i can make sense out of it though but that's all i got for realism yeah but to be fair i didn't really pay attention too much to like when people got killed or whatever because there wasn't anything that stuck out as being too unrealistic but I- no a lot of the effects were really really good yeah like it, it did seem like mm-hmm. Aside from like a few things that make it uh, definitely stick out as a movie, besides that, like you could, it's almost like paranormal activity where you could believe it as something that yeah might have actually happened. So for sure, no, I I think if three is fair, I was thinking about maybe giving it a little higher, but while you were mentioning yours, I thought of a few other things. <laughs> That didn't make sense to me when I was watching it. And um, we touched on a couple things before, like (laughs) how there weren't sexual harassment lawsuits and things brought up and issues that way with Paul the perv. Or... I mean, that could be like a pressure thing, though. Like It could. And some people are like, oh, it's fine. He's harmless. It's whatever. But... You would think with how hard he's going into it, like, they would have at least said something. (laughs) Yeah, like, dude, do you need to... Back off? Yeah. But, you know, there's also a scene where Alex drops his phone and, like, the back comes off and all, but no one thinks to pick it back up and put it together or anything. That seemed extremely unrealistic to me. Like, anyone that drops their phone is immediately like, oh, crap. (laughs) And is diving down to pick up their phone. Hmm. Even when it's, you know, a Nokia brick that is perfectly fine, you still at least put the back on it and put it back in your pocket. Like, you don't just walk off and leave it on the ground. That's just weird. Also, they decided to have their their haunted house in an abandoned building that had been abandoned. They didn't know how long. They knew it was several years at least. But they didn't have any kind of inspectors coming in, any kind of contractors. And I know that they're extremely strapped for cash and they were working on it themselves. But that place needed to be checked over, if nothing else, for issues like rotten boards that you could fall through into the basement or asbestos or (laughs) any number of electrical issues that could cause fires in the walls. Because all of these are liability issues. I'd imagine at the minimum, maybe, because I don't know a whole lot about haunted houses, but I would assume that at minimum, they'd have like a fire inspector come and inspect before. At minimum. And with that place, they had broken windows and everything. So there's potential for mold and they're staying there. Like they said it was a few days before they got the lights on. But that doesn't mean that the place is suitable for habitation at all. That place looks like a strong gust of wind away from blowing over an area. (laughs) So um, I'm just like, when they were walking through it, all I was seeing was lawsuit. (laughs) Lawsuits everywhere. Tetanus. (laughs) Like, you're just gonna... Get splitters and tetanus and lockjaw and (laughs) you're just going to die. And you're going to inhale mold spores or asbestos and 
you're gonna die that way instead. <laughs> it's just a toss up of which is gonna kill you first. Or falling through the floor, or things coming through the ceiling. <laughs> So it just, it did not seem safe. It seemed like a total nightmare for a business, to be perfectly honest. Now, I get the potential for graffiti and, like, sigils and stuff. I wish they had touched on it, even as far as going like, oh, you know, people probably broke in and did it as a joke or whatever, because that happens a lot <laughs> with abandoned buildings. Mm-hmm. People get bored and want to explore or teenagers are dared to go in and see how long they can stay in there and leave a mark or they have a party or they're bored and want to freak other people out that they know are going to be bored and come in after them. So I get potential like pentagrams and sigils and things like that. And I understand the the Bibles they would likely have extra down in the basement. I'm glad they at least touched on that. Like, it was a hotel. Hotels have Bibles in literally every room, ever. <laughs> I wish that they had investigated more when they would see the mannequins move, particularly the heads, after they showed previously that they don't move. Why would you not mess with them more after seeing evidence that they could, like the heads could be turned, and see if maybe you just needed to finagle it a little bit or move it a different way or if there was like some kind of lock or something if you unlocked it you could turn it whatever so i wish that they had dealt a little bit more with that because they jump to certain things very very quick and i know it's a movie they have a, a very finite small amount of time especially for found footage they can't do it too long of a movie because then it just drags yeah, and they lose people's interest and it starts to unravel even faster and yeah. <laughs> it won't make near as much sense. I get that. But they were weaker on those little things when they should have just beefed them up just a little bit and it would have made it a much stronger movie mm -hmm. and made it even scarier if they looked into certain things a little more. And can't still find an explanation for it. Fair. So, But most of the issues that I took was just all of the, <laughs> the lack of building code <laughs> and permits and things. Yeah. You know, the normal stuff that would go into shoring up a, a place, even for a short while. Because if anything happens on the premises and you're running a business there, then it's on you. <laughs> And if they're strapped for cash as it is, and they're likely going under, then they're going to do everything that they can to make sure that it runs as smoothly as possible. Yeah. So, one last thing. The chick that was handcuffed in the basement. Oh, yes. Why they that. picked handcuffs that she can't just get out of or give her the key mm -hmm. instead of the dude that was across the room. That's definitely a safety hazard. That's a huge safety hazard and makes no sense. So that's what I got. Otherwise, it would have been a fairly strong movie. It's just where they get certain tapes after they were supposedly killed, building issues, and just all the lawsuits, all the potential lawsuits. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely overall, I feel like it's one of the stronger found footage movies. I feel like Blair Witch and Paranormal Activity are definitely the stronger movies over this, but... Blair Witch is debatable, but I also get a lot more bored in that one than I do this one, so... Yeah, I, like, we'll, <laughs> we'll cover Blair Witch someday, yeah. <laughs> and I have opinions that... Maybe a lot of people don't agree with, but... We'll get so, there. <laughs> but yeah, one day. Uh, it's not the original found footage film, for sure. Yeah. Hell House, but it's it's up there. Yeah, and it's got great scares. It feels mm -hmm. overall pretty realistic. Uh, you, It feels believable. It's fun to unravel the mystery as the yes. movie plays through, but... Yeah, it's like out of all of the found footage movies there are, there's really not that many that are much better. 
than yeah. this one. So it's like if you enjoy found footage movies and you haven't given this one a watch, I, I definitely think it's worth looking into. Highly recommend. This would be a really, really good one to wait until it's dark out. Yeah. Turn off all the other lights. Yes. And then grab your popcorn or your snack of choice and sit with a couple of friends in the dark. Or by yourself. Watching. Ooh. Brave. If you're super brave, watch it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun, too, to watch it with a friend. Yes. And just have... Excuse you? But, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Hellhound made a weird noise. All good. <laughs> But thank you so much for everyone who joined us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie, game, or tea and keep up to date with our content, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and most places you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please subscribe, like, and share our content. We also have a Teespring and a PayPal donate button available if you'd like to support us monetarily. And you can find all of the sites mentioned linked below. Until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye. Bye.